Have you considered how enhancing your sex life prepares you for birth? How concepts of presence, embodiment, and surrender help you to prepare for an orgasmic birth as well as more orgasmic sex? My guest today is going to talk about what orgasmic birth can teach us about having great sex life. Hi, I'm Deborah Pascali Benaro, founder and director of Orgasmic Birth and host of the Orgasmic Birth podcast. My guest today is Susanna Weiss. And we're welcoming her back. I hope you listen to her other episode. She's a writer, a sex educator, a birth doula, and her writing on gender, sexuality, and relationships has been published and featured in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and more. And most recently, Susanna attended our orgasmic birth practitioner training. So welcome back, Susanna. It's such a pleasure to have you join us, especially as one of our our new orgasmic birth practitioners. Thank you. It's good to be back. Well, it was really special to have you a part of our program. I know you came in already writing about orgasmic birth and we had met um, and you interviewed me about that. But I'd love to ask you if you can share a little bit about what being in the program meant for you and any takeaways that you might have. Yeah, it was great to uh, hear from so many people who had personal experience guiding orgasmic births and natural births and the amazing work they're doing. And yeah, to talk about not just the techniques for for orgasmic birth. And I also appreciated the discussion of techniques for postpartum sex and regaining your sex life. And um, yeah, also just talking about the politics of it and why we aim to, in our culture, to sterilize and desexualize birth. And yeah, to hear um, in one session, a gynecologist talk about how 80% of births can be done at home and how how beautiful it is the intuition and the um instinct that mothers have when they are left to do birth their way that was very impactful thank you and we're getting ready to open up another round of orgasmic birth practitioners would you recommend it to other doulas and midwives nurses educators Yes, and I'm going to be a guest speaker talking about peripartum sexuality. So you should definitely come. Yes, I was hoping you were going to share that. We're so excited that you're going to be teaching our practitioners and taking us deeper. And today, I have to say, I love your title of what orgasmic birth can teach us about having a great sex life. Can you share what are some of the elements that we learn from birth that we can bring forward? Sure. Sneeze attack. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the answer that like it's automatic, like a sneeze. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, orgasmic birth, there's a lot of overlap between what is necessary for an orgasmic birth and what's necessary for having great sex. A lot of um, both processes involve being in your body, being present, not being goal oriented and um, incorporating sensuality into sex and or birth and engaging all of your sexes. There's a lot of senses, not sexes. There's a lot of commonality. Um, yeah, and I think sort of around the time I was learning about orgasmic birth, I was also studying somatic sexology and I there was a lot of overlap just between these um some of the practices I learned such as orgasmic yoga which is this idea that you can cultivate orgasmic energy through movement and breath and that can also help during birth I think expanding your definition of orgasm is important for both and seeing that orgasmic sensations can go well beyond just a sexual climax 
And I love how you say, you know, broadening that definition of orgasm, because I think that's so important. As you know, orgasmic birth is not just an orgasm, right? The people that have that are blessed, but it's so much more than that. Can you dive a little bit into that? What would be some, some of the ways that you could expand that definition? Yeah, so some people talk about experiencing orgasmic sensations through breath work. So one exercise I have people do is to breathe into their pelvis and imagine that they are bringing sexual sensation there and it's expanding. And some people can experience a sort of sexual release through rep repeated breath work to circulate sexual energy. And um, so that's sort of an example of an orgasmic sensation that may not be defined the same way as a climax, although there are some similarities, like people who can think off, who can think themselves to orgasm, demonstrate some of the same brain activity and the same hormonal shifts as someone who has just had a climax. So I think the more research we do, the more we're discovering that there are many ways to experience orgasmic states. And um, yeah, one of my mentors once said, like, just going outside and seeing the sunset can be orgasmic or sipping a cup of coffee or feeling the wind against you. And once you can get into that mindset, I think it's easier to access orgasmic sensations during birth because you can gain them from a greater variety of sources. Yeah. And that sounds, even as you were saying it, right? And I did that deep breath with you, I could feel a bit of that sensation. So I know you talked and you mentioned already, but I wanted to go deeper because you talked about presence. Um, I mentioned embodiment in our intro and surrender can all help create an orgasmic birth and orgasmic sense. And sex. And I know for a lot of people, they're like, what do you mean presence and embodiment? Those might not be terms people are familiar with. By presence, I mean, being aware of what your five senses are perceiving. And that's similar to embodiment. I would say those are similar concepts. Presence is perhaps broader, but um, yeah, presence can mean looking into your partner's eyes and being very attuned to them and noticing everything they're doing. It means noticing what's happening in the moment. And I would say embodiment means specifically noticing what's happening in your body. Because uh, a lot of us have more happening in our bodies than we're aware of. And we may feel like we're not able to experience as much sexual pleasure as we want, but if we really tune into our bodies rather than thinking during sex or thinking about what you're going to do after or thinking about why am I not feeling anything, if you focus on what kind of sensation am I feeling, um, how strong is the sensation, where exactly am I feeling it, if you notice the details, then that sensation grows. So that's what I mean by presence and embodiment and by Surrender, what I mean is generally saying yes to the moment. In orgasmic birth, they talk about not fighting uh, uncomfortable or intense sensations. So saying yes to them, accepting them, not fearing that they mean you're in danger, saying, okay, I embrace this moment. And often I've heard people say that often the sensation passes or turns into something more pleasant once you do that. And with sex, it's not exactly the same because it's not normal to experience unwanted pain during sex. Well, you might say the same for birth, actually. But um, with sex, it's less about sitting with uncomfortable sensations and more about saying yes to whatever sensation you're feeling. The same thing I talked about with embodiment, noticing it, saying, yes, I'm here with this sensation and I'm going to feel it. And that allows it to grow. Yeah. I love that because we talked about right in our class too, that like you, you can't think your way through childbirth and certainly you can't think your way through an orgasmic birth. And what you're saying is that's so true of sex, right? If we're in our head, then we're not in our body and we have to feel our way and really be present to feel those sensations in both experiences um, that makes such a difference. So I really appreciate that. 
And I know that you also, and this is so important in birth and, and sex as well, um, really talk about respecting women's body and autonomy to have more pleasurable lives in every way. Can you talk about that? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the key ingredients to an orgasmic birth, from what I understand, is that the person giving birth feels in control and that they're able to shape their own birth plan. And if something happens that they require a medical intervention, that at least that's explained to them and they have the chance to consent. And um, that's equally important in sex. If we, if things are happening to our bodies that we're not okay with, then we begin to dissociate. Even if we're like, only a little bit not okay with. I'm not necessarily talking about sexual assault, but just pushing yourself to do something because you think it'll please someone else. Or in birth, that could mean, you know, your doctor doesn't fully explain what they're doing. They recommend an epidural. Maybe you're in pain, so you just say, sure. But then you realize, did I really even have the information I needed to make that decision? So there's another parallel and when you're fully agreeing to what's happening you're able to be more present um and you don't have walls up and you're not dissociating and that opens up more opportunities for pleasure yeah and as you say so important in birth and life right to have all the information that we need and desire to really participate in those decision making um and i as you know, I stress that so much in birth and also for doulas to facilitate that. So something else that's been coming up that I've had a lot of questions lately and I thought I'd ask you is, I've had several people and actually, I think you know, uh, midwife Robin Lim, we've talked about this a lot, that her first orgasm was in childbirth. And she like said, boy, that blew orgasmic birth for her into a whole different way and not only opened up her birth with some pleasure but also made a big difference in her life going forward but for people that i'm getting some emails saying you know i haven't had an orgasm and how is that going to impact my ability to find pleasure in birth what would you say how can we guide them I would say, um, like we were just talking about, pleasurable and orgasmic birth is about much more than having a climax. So, and who knows, you could have your first one there, but even if you don't, that's not what it's about. That's only one moment. So yeah, think about pleasure and orgasmic sensations more broadly and think about how you can experience pleasure through your whole body, um, whether that's through massage, through aromatherapy, through cuddling or kissing your partner, think about, and some people who have never had a climax are better at that because they're used to enjoying sexual sensations other than climax. So just I think the expanding the definition of orgasm can be really helpful for them to see, well, maybe I have not had an orgasm, but I've had orgasmic sensations and I can cultivate those more so during childbirth. I think they're just as capable as someone who has tons of orgasms. Great, great advice. So I know that we have many people that are following us that are pregnant or thinking about being pregnant. What would be some ways, some other advice that you might have for them to prepare their body, kind of mind, spirit, and sexuality for birth? I've, I believe it was Sri Dawn, who, she, who, a doula who said, you birth the way you live. And so that's what I think of when people talk about preparing before birth. I think learning to get into the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest state is important. So you can access that during birth and you're not under constant stress or constantly in a hurry. Cause then if that's how you live your life, that's the energy you bring to birth and you're more prone to fear and tension. So I would say that uh, structure your lifestyle, create a lifestyle that lets you relax, um, get outside frequently, put your feet on the ground, move slowly, cook your meals, take the time to nurture yourself however you like to take luxurious baths. 
And in terms of sexuality specifically, you can do practices like the breathwork exercise that I mentioned that helps you to cultivate sexual sensation throughout your body. Um, you can also do breast massages where you use massage oil and just make circles around your breasts and use, feel, use that to feel as much pleasure as you can. And that can also be something that you can bring in during childbirth. And it can just like get your body into a pleasurable state. I would say engage in as much masturbation or sex as you want. And um, it might be helpful to get used to large things in your vagina, whether that's a dildo or fisting, just to have some practice with that. I love it. And I love the all from taking it from the simple and the breath to masturbation and sexuality, right? Such a breath of things that you can do when you're pregnant to really prepare body, mind, spirit, and sexuality. Is there anything else you would recommend for people that specifically are saying, I'd like an orgasmic birth? I would say like hiring a doula is very helpful just to advocate for you and to help you come up with comfort measures and sensual elements you can add to your birth. Um, and make sure you have a team that doesn't make you feel rushed, that makes you feel heard and that honors and respects your wishes and takes your desire for orgasmic birth seriously. And, um, and you know, read the orgasmic birth book, watch the documentary, read the stories at orgasmicbirth.com and get inspired and know that it's possible. Thank you so much, Susanna. And I know we're waiting for your session in our new practitioners course. So we're going to be looking forward to that. And I know, spoiler alert, right, a new book coming out, but we'll have you back to talk about that in the future because I'm looking forward to hearing about that. But are there other ways that people can connect with you right now? How can they find you? And are there any offerings you want to share? Yeah, you can actually pre-order my book at this time. It's called Subjectified, Becoming a Sexual Subject. It's a play on the word objectified. So uh, hopefully I can give you that link. It's on Amazon. And yeah, you can find me on my website, SusannaWeiss.com. That's S-U-Z-A-N-N-A-H-W-E-I-S-S. -S. Uh, my Twitter is Susanna Weiss. My Instagram is Weiss Susanna. Fantastic. Can you give us just a nugget about what the book's about a little bit more? Yeah, it's about how women can be sexual subjects rather than objects. So how we can act based on our own desire in a world that pressures us to put others desire before our own and how we can focus on what turns us on and what we like to look at and what we like to feel in a world that sort of makes women into objects. And it that's a personal story about me on that journey, as well as a larger cultural story. Oh, I can't wait to read it. So I'm so happy to hear we can pre-order. So we will definitely be putting that link into the show notes. So wherever you're listening today, make sure you go back to the show notes so that you can pre-order Susanna's book and also connect with her on all the different platforms. So I thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. And thank you to everyone listening. We always love to hear from you. Please share your comments, your feedback, and we hope that you'll rate um, and review our podcast. It helps us reach more people to bring them all that's possible in birth. So thank you for joining us today. And please join us for our next episode of the Orgasmic Birth Podcast. Thank you.